Well, your car is totaled. This woman is acting far too aloof for the circumstances she finds herself in, a side effect of a long night of drinking, one that ended far too soon for her tastes. But as the investigation moves forward, it becomes apparent that her self-centered indifference would shake even the most hardened officer. You don't. Your car is property of East Bay Police Department because it's a crime scene. Did you just hear what I just told you? Not every day you see a severed leg enmeshed with the front end of a vehicle, let alone two bodies struck at once. On April 10th, 2022, just outside a Full Throttle Barn Grill in East Peoria, Illinois, police responded to this horrific scene after receiving a 911 call from the woman driving the car. Come over here with me, ma'am, okay? I called as soon as this happened. I, was I just understand. Like, this doesn't happen. I understand. I got it badly. Like, why would this happen? Okay. Stephanie Melgoza was a 23-year-old college student who was on the brink of graduation. Just four more weeks, and all that hard work would finally pay off. That seems like a pipe dream now. Were you leaving the bar? Were you coming this I down the road? I was coming. I was coming here. Okay. You know, I had just gotten my night started. This was her chance to be honest with the officers, but the smell of alcohol in her breath told an entirely different story. Police were able to track her car back to another bar in East Peoria named Tavern 41, but something was already off about her demeanor. When faced with two severely injured pedestrians, she only seemed to be able to direct the conversation towards herself and how much of an inconvenience this was to her. Are you hurt at all or need, or need medics yourself? Uh, no, sir. Because your entire, I mean, your car's pretty beat up. I'm making sure, are, okay. you, are you bleeding anywhere? Um, no, I'm okay. So explain detail, just what happened? Prior okay. to the accident. I was coming to Colorado and I was almost here as you can see. Were you, were you driving this way or that coming down that coming side road? I was coming here road? this way. Okay. And suddenly one person walked out in front of me. Okay. And my car got hit. That's twice now that she's trying to frame herself as the victim of this whole ordeal. It was her car that got hit not the person who was being treated for a missing extremity on the side of the road. And then someone said, oh, someone else is hit. I'm just like, oh my God, how did that happen? But I promise you, like, I only know one person got hit and I'm just like, they came out of nowhere because I am a safe driver. If you had asked me how fast were you going when you hit the person? I would say I was going at least, at least four. The speed limit on this road was 30 miles an hour. If Stephanie were arriving at this destination, she would not have been going that fast unless she intended to drift into the parking lot. Nothing about that statement paints the picture of a safe driver. Dismissing the very real second victim currently receiving CPR, that paints a much more problematic picture. But the officer still couldn't get over the smell of the alcohol. Over the course of the night, how much have you had to drink? I probably had about three drinks. What's, what's, what is three drinks? Do you like, are we talking, what type of drinks? Just vodka. Vodka, straight vodka or mixed drinks? Uh, vodka and water, so I was staying hydrated, you know, and okay. drinking. If you had me do a test, I think I would pass. Just like, not, don't test me, but I think I would pass. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, we're, we are gonna do those tests here in a little bit, mm -hmm. because the circumstances obviously we have, okay? Two people were fighting for their lives, but she had the audacity to request she not be tested for DUI. She wasn't belligerent beyond reason. She was bending the truth in her favor to avoid punishment. Thankfully, the officer realized that early. All right, come right over here. You need to stand here in front of my squad car and face me. But still, there was that unshakable sense of indifference about her. That became even more apparent when she started to treat the sobriety test like a party game. I want you to follow tip my pen of your eyes, your eyes only, but keep your head still. Okay. Just your eyes. Oh, it's we're gonna really try, hard. We're gonna try that again. It's hard. All right. Just... Okay, okay, okay. Are you able to hold your head still without your hands? Okay. All right, just, just follow with your eyes, okay? 
That inappropriate laughter was becoming just as routine as her failure to follow simple directions. Moving along to the next bit of coursework, the officer made sure she had everything she needed for the exam. This is what it's going to look like. This position you're in, when I say go, one, two, three, on down to nine. Keep that front foot on the line. Use your other foot to turn yourself around. Go back just the same. One, two, three, and on down to nine, okay? Again, I just did three for demonstration purposes. I'm going to have you do nine each way. She was a hopeless student, unable to keep one foot in front of the other. But the next test had nothing to do with motor skills, just cold, hard facts. This is called a PBT test. You ever blown one of these before? Okay. You know what the legal limit is to drive in Illinois? Okay, 0 0.08, okay? What I have you do is take a deep breath, a long, hard, steady blow into the straw, just like you're blowing up a balloon. Keep blowing until you hear the machine click, okay? All right? Blowing up a what? Yes, ma'am. Take a deep breath, long, hard, steady blow. She could laugh all she wanted, but it wasn't going to change the fact that Paul Prowance and Andrea Rosewicks, a couple engaged to be married, were quickly slipping away from the EMTs. While she spouted on about the upward trajectory of her life after college, the curtains on theirs were closing. You're a Bradley student? I graduate in four weeks. You're a point two six four, okay? All right. Okay, go ahead and turn around for me and place your hands behind your back. You are under arrest for DUI, okay? She had blood on her hands and glass on her clothing. While her wounds were exceptionally minor, police still followed protocol and drove her to the hospital for treatment. First off, I'm going to let you know the two people. You did hit two people total. I did not. You did. I didn't. Okay, I'm Thank just, you. okay. Yeah. However you want to word it to yourself, that's fine. Okay, I'm just telling you, there's two people struck by your vehicle and both, both are dead. All right, come follow me. I'm going to write this emergency doors here. If it was two, I'd be crying, you know what I mean? I'd be like, oh my God. The despicable nature of that statement asserted that, by her logic, one person wasn't worth weeping over, especially because they stepped in front of her car. Accountability had fallen into the void, or maybe it was never there to begin with. drinking already? We're talking about Vegas. Oh. There's no women at Vegas, right? <laughs> An open bottle of vodka was found in her car, as well as a pipe and a bit of cannabis. Stephanie was always in party mode, and if anything harshed that vibe, she simply avoided it. She was living in a parallel universe, one where those two unfortunate souls didn't have to pay Karen's toll, and the officer's only response to that level of denial was silence. <laughs> Narcissistic trigger number one deprived them of attention. Like a child, she had to ramp up her reprehensible behavior to elicit a response, but the officer didn't buy into it. That didn't mean it didn't get under his skin, though. with you you go to jail you don't have a bond you kill two people tonight did you understand what i told you that you killed two people tonight yeah so i'm just wondering when i can go to school okay we're done there's only so much ignorance anyone could take and this man reached his limit after that exchange he didn't hesitate to put her in her place your own body camera being completely careless about killing two people tonight you could care less that's sad and pathetic and horrible all at the same time. Can you say that? Yes, ma'am, I can. This went beyond ignorance. This went beyond denial. This went beyond conceit. So, you want to put it like, you know, my professors, and you want to get it, can go back to school for a while, or what? Can I graduate before we leave? Like, I need to do this. Well, to be quite frankly, I'm a little more concerned about the two people that are dead right now, to be fair. 
That's right. She rolled her eyes at the mention of those she ran down. Her future took precedence above all else. And if anything denied her that, it was scorned. No, this was psychopathy. She was held in jail for two days while Bond was sorted out, and she was released on $15,000, 10% of her total bond. She continued on with her life like that heinous atrocity didn't happen. In the year between her trial, she got a boyfriend. She got married to that boyfriend. She got pregnant with that boyfriend, all the while fishing for sympathy, all the while denying her culpability and all the while ignorant of the very real possibility that her child would grow up without her mother. It wasn't until April the next year that her lawyer advised a different course of action. A guilty plea from the woman who struck and killed two people with her car while intoxicated last April. She faced 28 years in prison for the two charges of manslaughter and entered a blind plea while the grieving families demanded the maximum sentence. Uh, we thought it was more prudent for her to admit that she was in the wrong and accept responsibility for what occurred here. And on April 28, 2023, the judge ruled for a more lenient sentence because of her status as an expecting mother. Only 14 years, with four months already served under supervised confinement and only 85% required. That meant by her child's 11th birthday, she would finally be a free woman again. Stephanie Malgoza stole two lives from the world after a careless decision to get behind the wheel intoxicated. She sought sympathy instead of reconciliation and brought a life into the world that would only know her for that bad decision. In the court proceedings, her own father sat on the side of the victims and his court mandated to raise yet another one who fell prey to her bottomless well of apathy. Thank you for detecting with us today. We have many more investigations unfolding. And if you want an inside look at what we've got coming your way, check out the links in the description to find us on Twitter and get access to our Discord server. We'd love to have you join our community and provide input on which developments warrant our attention. If you appreciate our efforts and want to support our future case studies, please take a moment to like and subscribe so that you know when our next file is revealed. And while you're at it, why don't you check out this video on the screen? Who knows, it might be right up your alley. Until next time.